Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back to Stick Tips here on the Farts and Crap Show. I know it's been a while since I've made one of these episodes, and to those of you who are disappointed by that, I do apologize. Um, and like many of you guys, I am not willing to shell out 50 bucks for basically a new N64 controller or especially a new three button Genesis pad when I already have Genesis pads that are compatible with the Switch. Namely, the 8BitDo M30 2.4G, which I've talked about in previous Stick Tips episodes, and I still use mine pretty religiously. Um, and I actually found a really great use for this controller uh, on the new Switch Online expansion pack, which I am playing right now. So, and namely, I'm talking about Mario Kart 64, aka still the best Mario Kart uh, in my book. Now, it does take a little bit of fiddling in order to get this to work, uh, but thankfully, the M30 has glorious macros. Macros, in this case, being used for uh, the D-pad to assign it as the left analog stick on the switch. So basically you just hold minus and left for five seconds, and if you want to reset the D-pad to be the D-pad, uh, hold minus and up for five seconds. So this is useful uh, in the case of Mario Kart 64 because you can't use the D-pad um, for directional control. Now, it does take a little bit more fiddling because essentially you want R to be R, naturally, uh, and you want L, probably, to be uh, Z, because Z was to use items in this game. Um, however, on the Switch Online service, the control scheme is a little bit weird. It's a little bit strange. So ZL is Z. And uh, basically how you're going to want to do this, what this is going to look like, is use a custom mapping, which thankfully the 8BitDo M30 2.4G does support um, custom button mappings. And all you have to do is swap ZR and R. That's all you got to do. And you can save um, presets. So basically what I've done is I set one as my global for this controller, which is useful for most games um, because L and R are not actually L and R, it's ZL and ZR and L and R are C. Oh, L and R are mapped to Z or Z and C for cat, respectively. Um, however, on the Genesis games, which we'll get to in a minute, you actually do want to set R to be A and A to be Y. And the reason for this is because it is not mapped correctly by default. Like A, B, and C are not A, B, and C. Uh, on a standard Switch controller, A, B, and C are set to Y, B, and A, respectively. And that is because the layout is similar. However, on a Genesis pad like the M30 2.4G, that is not how it's mapped. So if you want A, B, and C to be A, B, and C, you have to do this mapping. Um, which is really strange because Japan got the six button Mega Drive controller instead of the three button controller. So, why not just have support for the 6-button Genesis pad or Saturn pad, as many people will be using, considering Retrobit and 8BitDo have both been making Genesis-style controllers for quite a while, and the Retrobit ones are actually officially licensed by Sega. Um, but yeah, currently I am using the N64 mapping, which is just like the M30 mapping, except uh, the left is fine, 
on this because you do want ZL to be on the left trigger. And um, everything else is totally fine. A is A, B is B. And um, actually using the C buttons, a little bit weird. But uh, you can hold, you can do the ZR thing. Like, if you want to, this is not going to work for most games, because for most games you do actually want um, an analog input. But for Mario Kart 64, this works super well, specifically because of the drifting. Um, I wore down my N64 controllers pretty much just playing this game. <laughs> like... It wasn't Mario 64 or Star Fox 64 that did it. Although, behind Mario Kart 64, those were the games I played the most. Uh, and yes, the fog is reduced. I don't know why. That's another criticism a lot of people are having for the N64 emulation. And I get it. Uh, not having the fog is kind of disorienting. And there still is a little bit of fog, depending on the stage. Uh, on this game, it's, like, not even visible, really. But, um... So the draw distance is noticeable. There's quite a bit of pop-in. But it really depends which game you're playing. So... This is, in my opinion, a great way to play this. Like... This probably will be the <laughs> controller I will be using for this game uh, indefinitely. Because if you want those finer degrees of, uh, of control, just tap the D-pad, like, very slightly. And that's how a lot of people played this game. They just kind of slightly flick the, um, the very hard plastic nub of the N64 controller. I mean, you can, you know, actually use it as an analog stick, but D-pad works much better for me. And honestly, when I play Mario Kart 8, I use the D-pad. I don't use the analog stick. So, to me, this feels natural. And of course, minus is also your menu button, so this controller it works out very, very well for that. I do appreciate that. Uh, because for most other Switch Online uh, applications, it's ZL and ZR together that brings up the menu. So, in my typical mapping for the M30, that would be C and Z together, which that's something you would never do naturally. So I'm still okay with that. And the fact that you can save presets it's so helpful. Um, however, for most other N64 games, I'm not going to be using this controller. I'm going to be using dun, 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 either the 8 SN30 Pro USB, which I've talked about previously and I'm going to switch to here in a minute, or the PDP Faceoff Deluxe Plus. Um, this is a fantastic Switch controller. I've used it for pretty much all the games that I own on the Switch. Unless, of course, I want the D-pad to be more prominent. Then I'm going to be using the 8-bit OS N30 Pro USB. Uh, some people prefer the more quote-unquote ergonomic 8-bit SN30 Pro Plus, or the more recent Pro 2. I have the Pro Plus, and I do use it for games where I need the motion control, because this controller does not have motion input. However, these are both $25 controllers that I've seen go less than $25. So, because it's like less than half, or half at full price, um, I would recommend these ones, and honestly, I use the Faceoff Deluxe Plus as my primary PS4 controller, thanks to the Brook Wingman XE. It's just a great adapter for that platform, 
and uh, whenever I see these go on sale, I buy a backup. So I actually have two of these now on top of the older ones that we still have. So because before the Deluxe Plus, they just had the PDP face-off controller, like wired controller, and you can, they call it the face-off because you can swap out the face plates as well as they have like mod kits. So like different uh, analog stick tips and um, I said stick tips again and uh, face plates. Yeah, which you can, and they have like different d-pad like clip on things so you can change the feel of the d-pad i don't have any of those i haven't tested any of those i just kind of use them stock uh and they feel great they really do so what i'm going to be doing is swapping back real quick actually let's stay on the eight th uh, the m30 for a little bit more because um i'm going to close the n64 application We'll go back to settings and go back to controllers and sensors, change the button mapping, change this one, load the Genesis layout. Now this is going to be a little bit weird for some people, but essentially all you have to remember is C is now going to be your confirm and B is going to stay the same. So instead of A being confirm, it's C and that's pretty much it. Uh, everything else is kind of the same. However, if you're having an issue with the... Actually, I think you can still play these games with analog. I don't think I have to reset the, uh, the D-pad. And again, that is done with the uh, holding up and minus for five seconds. So I might have to do that, I'm not sure. Um, and some games actually do have custom button assignment, um, like Gunstar Heroes does. I absolutely adore this game, and we'll go ahead and start it. And thankfully, thankfully, they did away with uh, the horrendous um, borders. And uh, also added the ability to have 4x3 or pixel perfect aspect ratios, as well as 4x3 with the CRT filter, which I don't really like. Um, but yeah, across all of the Switch Online game platforms, so N64, Genesis, Super Nintendo, Original Nintendo, um, you can finally get rid of that border that shows like how to access the menu, which is so helpful because I hated that. Absolutely hated that. In fact, I considered making my own borders to kind of get rid of that. Um, but yeah, let's go into one player, going against our heroes, and see the border. It's great. And we got square pixels, which is also great because I have always preferred the one to one. PAR or pixel aspect ratio. And because I already have the custom button mapping, this is going to be fine. But you can change the configuration. I really wish they would update these games though to support the six button Genesis layout. That would be amazing. Um, because, yeah, for the most part, if you're going to buy a third party Genesis controller, you're getting the six button controller. Aside from the Switch Online service, I don't even know where to get a three-button controller. Uh, unless you get the American version of the Genesis Mini, which did come with two very not good uh, three-button controllers that are USB. And I would not recommend to anyone, because the D-pad is terrible and the button quality is terrible. Uh, quick sound force, that's all good. Let's start. But yeah, all the buttons are where they should be here, and um, because the button mapping feels great. However, the Genesis emulation does have its own problems. Like, they didn't... Um, it is a bit choppier. I have noticed some screen tearing, 
and uh, they really should have uh, removed the sprite limit, which helps a lot of games, and even uh, was a feature actually on the Genesis collection, which I should still have installed, which is right here. And this is not a good way to play Genesis games because the input lag is pretty atrocious. And that's really the only problem with that collection. But um, it's still like a huge problem, like enough to kill, like make it a way that's not good to play these games. Um, and unfortunately, most of the people I know have uh, have passed on wanting to get the expansion pack because of the price point, obviously. Um, so I haven't really been able to try out the multiplayer very much yet, but I'm very down to try it out. So if you guys have the Switch expansion pack, uh, stop on by during a stream sometime. I stream every uh, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, except for possibly this coming Sunday, which is going to be Halloween, and Happy Halloween, everyone. Hope you guys are having a happy and safe holiday. And, um... Sorry, I won't be streaming on Halloween, probably. Because I am pretty sure I have other plans. But if I am, I'm likely going to be doing Bloodborne again, or... Maybe some Switch Online games. I don't know. But we'll go ahead and go back out to game selection. But yeah, C being A took me a while to get used to. But once you're used to it, it works great with all these games, honestly. For the most part, I found the emulation is really serviceable on pretty much all these games. There are some I haven't tried out yet. Uh, Shinobi 3 feels fine. I've mostly tested the ones I know super well, which are these top five. And for some reason, Sonic 2 has a little bit extra input lag. I don't know why. Is it not up, down, left, right, A, B, start? I thought that's what it was. Or is it hold A, up, down, left, right, B, start? I really don't remember. But, um... It's fine enough. It feels okay. Um, and, I mean, technically this is a two-player game, but I don't really think... Anybody plays this game two-player? And honestly, once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. Like, the input lag is noticeable, sure. Um, it just really shouldn't be there for, like, a Genesis game that is honestly super easy to emulate. Oh, and like I mentioned, I, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, they kind of screwed up the transparency effects, as you can see. Like, they don't really work as intended. Um in any of the games. It's not that bad in Sonic 2, and this is still a really good way to play this game. Just wanted to get the one up real quick. And another problem with the emulation here in the Genesis games is the sound. It honestly doesn't sound bad, like, per se, uh, in Sonic 2, but definitely in Gunstar Heroes. There was quite a bit of distortion I was hearing. Um, and yeah, in games where they do have different aspect ratios mid-game, uh, it'll just go to the correct native aspect ratio in pixel perfect mode. Which is awesome, because this is how I prefer to play my Genesis games. 
because to me, playing in 4x3, I just can't do it anymore. It's like, I know there's stretching that's going on that doesn't have to be there. And it really bothers me. Um, so yeah, if you want A, B, and C to actually be A, B, and C on your 6-button controller, that's all you gotta do. Is basically, you make a preset for it. Uh, and it's really not bad. It's really not bad. Um, so anyway, switching over now to the 8BitDo SN30 Pro USB. Gonna go ahead and go into controllers and change grip order. And I have it plugged in right here. Just press L and R, but I will keep the M30 on the ready. And press A when ready on this controller, which does not have a button mapping that's custom because it doesn't need one. Let's go ahead and go into the N64 games because while this is not my preferred controller for the N64 games, some of them at least, it does work super well. Um, for example, in Ocarina of Time or Mario 64 or Star Fox 64, it's a really great choice. Um, Mario. I do think the PDP Face Off Deluxe Plus is slightly more comfortable for some of these games. Um, I don't think it's that bad, per se. And it's very accurate. So for those parts of this game where you want like very slight analog control, um, it feels really good. It feels really, really good. It's a little bit jumpy, and that's because like, uh, 8BitDo hasn't really updated the firmware properly for the SN30 Pro USB yet. Uh, and I did make one of the previous Stick Tips episodes about that. I believe it was... Part 14. So, um, and that one was called the SN30 Pro USB Firmware Issue. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping they address that at some point. Uh, it has been quite a while since the, I think the version 1.04 was the last one they did. And that was... it doesn't have a date on here, actually. Yeah. So I would still recommend version 1.02, which is still available at support8 .com. So, it's uh, depending on the firmware, it might work better. Depending, uh, I have noticed for a lot of games that use uh, wireless communication of some variety, there is quite a bit of input lag, uh, and just like the analog sticks have some weirdness on there, so if you don't like the parallel stick layout, I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend... Um, Where'd they go? There we go. The PDP Face Off Deluxe Plus instead. Um, natively on the Switch, it works great. Plus, you get that headset jack, um, so you can just easily play on your TV with headphones. And it's great. So. Um, but yeah, as far as the analog control goes, it works great on pretty much all of these games. Uh, the SN30 Pro USB. Yeah. And of course, the real draw for this controller is the awesome D-pad. So, for Super Nintendo games, NES games, and Genesis games, it works great. And of course, you get that ZR, so you can still use the face buttons as the C buttons if you want. 
and it just it just feels good. And it really doesn't matter if it's this or Star Fox, like it feels great in Star Fox. Like really great. Uh, on this one, I think I actually do prefer the SN30 Pro uh, over the PDP Face Off Deluxe Plus. Like, they're both fine, but yeah, it's just you want that finer degree of control, and it just it feels really good. And this is. Definitely a game I've purchased too many times. <laughs> um, I think I have uh, I think this makes my fourth digital way to play this game. Uh, because I got it on the 3DS, I have it on the Wii U, I got it on the Wii, and now I can play it on here. So... Uh, granted, on the 3DS, it's a slightly different version. Well, actually, more than slightly. Um, however, playing it on the Wii or the Wii U, there was always quite a bit of input lag, and it really killed it. Like, it was fine, because it was kind of my only way to play the original for quite some time. But, um, now that it's on the Switch... This is, hands down, I think, the best way to play this game. And it is one of the best games on the N64. In my opinion, it is the best game on the N64. However, that is very divisive. Um, and using the right stick for the C buttons, I really don't mind it. Like, I'm very used to that because of how much I played it on the Wii and the Wii U. Um, so it's really not that bad, it's just a combination of analog inputs. So essentially it's like down and... Down on the left stick and right, or left on the right stick. To do the somersault. And um... That's honestly the most complicated control. Like when you're in all range mode, it's down and down on both sticks, I think. And then up, of course, changing to first-person view, which is... It just makes the game so much harder. Um, speaking of making the game harder, I believe when you're in the pause menu, you can use the Z button? Or L? Wait, what is it? R? R. You can press R to get rid of the reticle. Um, which, yeah, does make the game more challenging. But uh, if you're not a fan of the reticle, there you go, you don't have to play with it. So. But, um, yeah, I mean, this game is classic. It's timeless, in my opinion. Still the best Star Fox game. And yeah, again, opinion. But I really think it is. But um again, I am very opinionated when it comes to well video games in general and uh N64 games more specifically, so and it's a little weird having R be R and ZL be Z. But honestly, it doesn't take that long to adjust. Like, I'm already used to it. It already feels fine. But, um... Oh yeah, here's all range mode. I was kind of waiting for this to see... Yeah, it's down on both analog sticks to do the U-turn, which uh, is not that bad. I kind of just want to woo. I 
after all, I got all those bombs. Why not use them, right? But yeah, training mode is it's pretty way it's a pretty good way to get accustomed to the game's controls. And uh, to those of you who have never played this game, like you really should. Like it's it's very classic. I know the N64 didn't sell super well, so there probably are quite a few Switch owners who have never played this. Um, and the multiplayer is not great, by the way. It was kind of a pack-in thing um, with the original version because, I don't know, there was this kind of pressure, I guess, to make sure all N64 games had multiplayer. So there was, uh, there are quite a few that just kind of have it as like a afterthought so not the best but um anyway in my opinion closing thoughts um i have individual episodes about all three of these controllers honestly and they are typically all pretty cheap like msrp on all three is they're like 25 bucks a piece you know so honestly you could get two and uh two for the price of one compared to nintendo's controllers which uh you still have to buy through their service you can't just go you know hop on amazon or like target or walmart or whatever you prefer to use as your online store and pick up one of these games or one of these controllers um just doesn't just doesn't work that way can't do that so um but yeah thank you all for watching this uh episode greatly appreciate it um sorry i haven't reviewed a new controller in quite a while uh there are a few on the horizon this holiday i'm looking at that are pretty interesting so i might do one on those but um yeah if you guys enjoyed it definitely show a friend and, uh, of course, a special shout-out to um, the inspirations for this episode, uh, Wolf Den and Nintendo Life. If you guys are unfamiliar with their channels, they both did great videos kind of about this same topic. I mean, everybody's kind of weighing in on the Switch expansion pack, but, of course, if you're watching this in the future... Maybe the maybe things are different now. I don't know, um, because it is very divisive right now. So, um, but yeah, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys had a good time. And um, during the outro, I'm just gonna leave you guys with one of my favorite pieces of music from video games. Period. And a very special thank you to the Farts and Crap Show members, Old Cranky Gamer and Novellus Draconis. Thank you guys so much for your continued support, checking out that join button, choosing to support the show a bit more directly. It greatly helps out. And, um, yeah, till next time, everybody, take care, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.